Hello and welcome to The Tricking Odyssey. I'm your host Bowie and today I've come to the Isle of Wight to see how people train and explore the history behind how white tricks came to exist. In this series, I'm going to be traveling the globe to investigate how people train, explore how they live, and to tell the never before heard stories from the biggest to the smallest tricking communities. My goals for this series are first and foremost to have fun, I've got to have a good time. I'm a strong believer that if something's not fun or not leading to something fun, then it's not really worth doing. The only reason to do something not fun is to help somebody else out, which is exactly why I dropped out of school when I was 17 to pursue my dream of becoming one of the best trickers in the world. Anyway, before we get onto my story, I just wanted to show you guys some of the island so you can get a better idea of what it's like to train and live here. My name is Robbie and I am the director and head coach of White Tricks. When I started tricking, all I could do was trick on mud, uh, wet grass, you know, slipping everywhere, uh, trying doubles would hurt. I'd be slamming my ankles together. Um, it wasn't necessarily particularly fun. The nearest gym would be a bus, a boat, another bus, a walk, a train and another walk. So all of my training was done on the island, which was weirdly done a lot on sand, just because, you know, I could, I could bail stuff and not have to worry about injury. I wasn't just going to not trick if it snowed. You know, that's a good two, three weeks about training sometimes. Honestly, my setup was so optimal. I had, my trampoline was like 12 foot. I had like a garage on one side. I had like stones on one side and then the rest was like a, a wall around it. And I'd be doing like triple falls and stuff and like, you know, obviously I don't advise that, but I didn't really have much choice. My name is Ruby Bates. I'm a tricker. I'm 18 and my TT name is X Rob Bates X. I've been tricking for about one and a half years, I guess, nearly coming up to two years. And I discovered tricking from like bodyweight training, really. I was well into my boxing. I did boxing for four years. And then through looking through techniques for bodyweight training, I obviously found TT went into the training conditioning part of the forum, asked for help and then slowly went over to the share vids part of the forum and discovered tricking. The worst thing about tricking, not be able to get that move that you really want, I guess, or like failing. sucks. The best thing about tricking is just generally having a good time with everyone. Everyone's always pushing each other. Everyone's always encouraging each other during tricking sessions. Like if you land a new move, everyone will come over to you like, what, what? And all this, like everyone will like jump on you, etc. And it's a good time. Do something. tutorials.com it's a forum where loads of different trickers speak and like arrange gatherings or help each other it's just the general tricking community online there isn't one club for it there isn't an association tricks tutorials is is where it's most tricking's at i use a give advice for people online to help their tricking efforts or other way around i mean i i need advice as well so sometimes i'll post like one of my moves like a cork or something or or a 540 and they can offer me advice and then I'll go outside and practice with that new advice. I also use it for motivation. If I watch a new sample that's come out on Tricks Tutorials then it will help motivate me and I can take stuff from their moves and apply it to my own.
one of my aspirations was to become one of the best trickers in the UK. And I think when I went to uni and I really managed to excel because I had access to a spring floor, I was just like, if I just had this earlier and I had it more, like I moved back from uni to the island, didn't have any access to gym. And I was like, well, you know, rather than being a part of the problem, let's be a part of the solution and actually come up with a plan. So uh, I was teaching at school for a little bit. And then um, after about two two years of teaching at school, I, I realized that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I made a business plan and uh, it was like 200 pages. It was like this big, thick business plan and it had like surveys in it. And uh, I had to get, um, I got a loan. We got like a 25,000 pound grant, which is amazing. Obviously that's free money. So that went towards the business and uh, everything just came together. And that's, here we are. As a kid, I was desperate to do judo, as it's what my dad did when he was young. However, after about a year of searching for a martial arts studio, still no luck. Luckily, when I was 13, my mum signed me up to this thing called White Tricks, and this was my first exposure to tricking. Once I'd been going to these sessions for a little while, all I wanted to be able to do was a Sailor Moon. And after landing this skill and a few other basics, I started coaching and helping out at the gym. How was my coaching when I started? Awkward. <laughs> so to be honest, like when, when I originally asked you to coach at the gym, I didn't really have any expectations. I was quite new to it as well. And I was just happy for you to like be a good role model and demonstrate cool tricks and also improve your own skills. Like you wanted to get better, better at tricking. I needed help. So it was just like a, a good thing for both of us. Yeah, I definitely noticed you kind of struggled a little bit to talk and things like that. But I don't think that's, I think that's pretty standard for most young people. I think I saw very earlier on that you're like very charismatic and, um, you know, you're all very good with social interactions as well. So I wasn't worried. I knew it was just like a matter of time before uh, you had enough confidence to sort of show that charisma and show that ability to socialize in a in a sort of coaching environment and bring out the best in everyone and you know here, here we are you're an awesome coach now so a few months passed and word spread like wildfire across the island the waiting list had now grown to over 100 people we needed a new facility a shiny new trekking gym opened up less than five minutes walk from my house and we could finally add more classes and had access to a spring floor for the first time. This new equipment and space enabled me to land many new skills such as gain a flash, cork, cartful. The upgraded gym and increased classes quickly leveled up my coaching skills, resulting in the legendary ceremony between gym owner and tricker. As if I'd been knighted, I gained the keys to the gym. And this is when tricking took over my life.
<laughs> After a few years in this gym and due to a couple of factors, we had outgrown it yet again. We now had a crazy waiting list of over a thousand people. And due to the restricted hours at the building, we couldn't run any more classes. Another major fault with this setup was that the spring floor was underneath the air tracks, the trampoline, and the gym equipment, which meant we had much less space than we paid for. This all led to the decision to upgrade the gym once again. of the biggest tricks and combos hit in this gym to date. What is your main goal as a coach? Basically, as a coach, I've got lots of different goals. I think, to be honest, just making sure I push everyone's skill level as high as I possibly can, but in an enjoyable and a fun environment. Um, I think by focusing on the skill level aspect of it, it's going to kind of tick the fun box and it's going to tick the business box. And at the end of the day, I'm still a business and I have to be able to afford to run. Yeah, that's why people go at the end of the day. That's the service that they go there for. So... Um, landing new skills and progression is going to be, I think, the the key thing for me to focus on. Do you still have any goals as a tricker? Yeah, well, as you know, I've got Achilles tendonitis. And um, for whatever reason, my body doesn't seem to be as tough as Matteo's, sadly. I don't necessarily think I have, like, one goal, but I just want to be able to practice tricking recreationally, but also, like, do intermediate tricks but very well, if that makes sense. So just, like really clean intermediate tricks and um, be a really good, good role model to the students by doing those skills and demonstrating them. And, you know, tricks are fun. So I'm happy to do that. Who is the biggest prospect at the gym? Biggest prospect at the gym? Jeez. The easy answer is Josh. The answer that you want to hear is you. <laughs> We're just talking raw skill level. Then obviously Josh is a very high prospect, but he's also very young. So there's there's lots of variables that I have to think about. I don't necessarily, I can't, it's so hard for me to say. Whereas right now, your mindset is very strong. Um, you have nothing stopping you other than reps, quality training, and, um, you know, just putting the work in. And I think a lot of trickers go wrong with that. They're just not thinking about, like, they're always thinking about all these aspects and they're just not putting the work in. But you put the work in, your mindset's great. I think you could make it. Um, Josh, I think, could make it as well. But again, He's so young. There's just so many variables, so many things that can change over time and go wrong or, or go right, hopefully. And also we've got like loads of really young trickers as well. And like some of them are insanely talented. They've got so much raw talent and, um, you know, any one of them could be insanely good at tricking. I just, I just don't know if like there's so much time between then and now that it's going to be difficult for me to, to measure it up. I am Joshua Williams and I'm from the Yard White. I started tricking in 2018. My main goal is to hopefully one day win Hooked, which would be a really nice goal and nice to show up Bowie. 
I reckon my biggest achievement was landing my triple cork on the floor. I felt like that took me forever to land, so it was real nice. Well, outside of tricking, I do a lot of football and then always have school, walking around, and always go on the Astro for lunch. Yeah, I'm always active. On Mondays, I don't have any training or work, so I normally just spend my time editing these videos and resting up ready for Tuesday session. All right, it's Tuesday. Today's one of my biggest training days, so I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of my diet. This is one of my favorite things to eat at the moment. It's got a bit of green, it's got a bit of red, and then there's some rice underneath. Tying it all together, it's delicious. I normally eat a lot of Asian food just because I find it easier to keep it healthy, and also it's really nice. Got my biggest session of the week later. It's my first RPE 10 day. RPE means rate of perceived exertion, and it's just a way of me to keep track of how hard I'm going each day so I don't get injured. That said, I am a little bit injured today, so I'm just gonna be sticking to left leg skills and we'll see how it goes at the session. All right, I'm at the gym. Just arrived, except I didn't. How was that for just arriving? Just arrived. <laughs> now, I just had a session and I hit some cool tricks. I'll show you some of the ones I just did right now. Nice, bro. Jeez. <laughs> My knee actually feels a lot better than I thought it would, so hopefully I'm going to be able to hit some good tricks. Like I said, the last session was good. I can't believe how good that session was, especially with my little knee injury. Managed to push through and hit some of my best combos. Can't believe I hit 2-1-0-1-2. Oh, that was insane. My most swings to dub is four, which is out of dub. It's also my first time doing dub dub from a rolly car will not cut off, which is nice. I really want to start working on um, taking pride in my tricks again. I feel like after this comment from Reese, I'll put it up. Um, I mean, I can't be having that. I got, I got to have good tricks. Yeah, anyway, just to finish up, got a little bit of rehab today and then going home and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm back at the gym, it's now Wednesday morning. Today is just a stretching and mobility session, so I'm going to do some stretches, some bridge walks. It's an RPE 5, so I'm not going too hard. It's mostly just a rest day from yesterday. I actually feel surprisingly flexible considering I tricked for about four hours yesterday. Pretty much straight, basically no rests, so feeling good. A little bit achy in the torso, but other than that.
we go. Finished my session. Just a short one today, but I'm back again later for some coaching. So I'll see you then. All right, I'm back at the gym. I'm just about to set up for my class. I'm not actually gonna film any today. So I'm just gonna put in some clips from my coaching course and I'll see you tomorrow. You're not gonna be on the Bowie channel, unfortunately. Yeah. Actually, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's fine by me. I don't care. What is it? I want it. I'm subscribed six times. Oh. Right, guys, we need to move on. All right, it's now Thursday. Ollie just had his toddler class. And i um, about to hit some tricks. It's an RPE six slash seven day, so I'm just going to do triple cork for it because it's double corks and cartful snappu. Trying to get a rolly cartful, not a punchy one. All right, let's see how the first trick goes. Beautiful. Let's see if I can do a cartful snappu. I don't think this is going to go that well. I just rewatched it and the kick was not big at all. Kind of sucked. All right, I've done 20 cartwheel progressions. Now I'm going to go for double corks. All right, I've completed all of my repetitions. The other thing I sometimes do on Thursdays is film videos like this one. Check it out if you want. Okay, it's now Saturday. Today, I've already done a bit of coaching. Coached from 10 till half three. Then I've had a rest, I've had a coffee. It's one of the best things about having a cafe in your gym. You can have a coffee right before your session. I think today I'm gonna to work on some B twists because they've been feeling good lately. And also, I wanna try and get some more double court variation combos and setups. Let's see how it goes. happy with that session I didn't say it before but that was an RPE 8 slash 9 so I can go basically as hard as I want I was really happy with those triple corks into the pit I don't think I've ever done them looking that nice double cork double cork on the floor again so good session the other thing I do today is a little bit of rehab it's exactly the same as the one I do on Tuesday so I'm not gonna put it in it's Sunday this morning I had a one-to-one -one. went home and did some editing I'm about to do some coaching and then later on I've got a session is 90% just conditioning.
And there you go. This is what my training has looked like for the past maybe two years since I got the keys to the gym pretty much. There's been some slight differences. Maybe it's a little bit more conditioning sometimes. Maybe it's a little bit more tricking other times. Hopefully you found it interesting or informative and I can't wait to get out there and see how other people train. I know the UK gyms have a ton of banter, so I'd be interested to see if that's a universal thing or if it's just in the UK. I can't wait to find out how people train in other places, places like Legend Trick where they seem a little bit more serious and also what the f*** is going on in China. Anyway, this is where I'm gonna end this video. I hope you enjoyed this more documentary style. These are the kinds of videos I'm gonna be making when I go on this journey in about 10 days. I am gonna try and keep posting some vlogs as well, so if you like them, keep an eye out for them but this is gonna be my main idea with this whole series. So I'll see you in the next one.